Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is haughty. Haughty. A little prideful or arrogant. When you come to Jeremiah chapter 37, you'll find that the king and the princes and everybody else, they do not listen to a word that Jeremiah says. They don't heed his counsel. But yet it's funny that now all of a sudden the king is coming, sending a message to him, wanting to hear if there's a word from the Lord. He's done this before and he'll do it again. But to think about all he wants to know is not really what wants to happen, what's going to happen. He really just wants to hear if they're going to be victorious. He only wants to hear good news. Now, we talked about yesterday how we handle the word of God. And if we handle the word of God only accepting the good news and not the bad, then we're not taking the whole counsel of God. But today, and as you read through Jeremiah chapter 37 today, you'll find that Jeremiah ends up imprisoned, end up with some other things going on as you read through the end of the chapter. But we're going to deal with the um, verses 6 through 10 today, and you'll, you'll see that the Egyptians have left. I'm sorry, the Egyptians had come and the Chaldeans had kind of took their eyes off of Jerusalem for a little while. They kind of backed off of them so they could take care of the Egyptians. Well, the Egyptians leave and they're going back home. And so the people began to hear and began to believe the lie. And so the king that they thought the good news was going to be the Chaldeans were going to go back home. And then they would be left okay. Now, all of a sudden, the word of all the false prophets would be true that, hey, there was going to be no destruction for Jerusalem. But that would mean that the word of God would have to be false. That means that everything that Jeremiah had said uh, that the Lord had told him to say would have been false. But notice what the Lord says, starting in verse 6 of Jeremiah chapter 37. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus you shall say to the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come up to help you, will return to Egypt to their own land. And the Chaldeans shall come back and fight against this city, and take it and burn it with fire. Thus says the Lord, Do not deceive yourselves, saying that the Chaldeans will surely depart from us, for they will not depart. For though you had defeated the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and there remained only wounded men among them, they would rise up, every man in his tent, and burn the city with fire. What he says is, even if you believe that the Chaldeans are going to leave and not come back, even if you were to destroy all the Chaldeans and the only ones that remained were the wounded, he said those wounded soldiers would get up and they would burn the city down. You see, that's what haughtiness and that's what pride gets us. See, it was the same for uh, throughout Israel's history, right? When they became prideful and boasting only in their own selves and their own power, or the, the gods that they had created, boasting in them, that's when they suffered the greatest loss. That's when they suffered the greatest defeat, and that's when they suffered the greatest separation from God. And the same is true for us. When we're prideful and we don't handle the Word of God like we ought to, when we're prideful and think that we know it all already and there's nothing that God can tell us, then we too are bringing and inviting destruction on ourselves. And if we're not careful, we'll also say, well, Look, it looks like things are clearing up. It, it looks like maybe there is going to be peace on earth. Maybe revelation isn't quite true. Well, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And we're going to see, and we will find out whether it's in our lifetime or not, one way or another, we will know and experience or at least be able to see and know that the word of God has come true when we get to glory as believers I hope and pray that we're raptured up before things get much worse. I believe the Bible teaches that the church will be raptured up before the end times begin. But as we think about how difficult things will be, even leading up to the tribulation and the great tribulation, 
Have you ever stopped to think how prideful are we being to think that it won't happen to us? How many people do you think today who claim to be believers? How many people do you think that claim to know what the word of the Lord actually says? How many people do you think actually say, I don't care what God has to say. If it's not good for me, then I don't want to hear it. And how many people with their pride and their arrogance will say, it looks like everything is smooth sailing from here. Well, it may not be a weak and a weak and 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 wounded warrior that will get up and burn this city down. No, it will be an angel of the Lord, be Jesus Christ Himself when He comes back to Earth as victor over all things, declaring destruction, doing away with this old Earth, and creating a new heaven and a new Earth. We must be careful that we handle the word of God properly and not be arrogant, not be haughty. Because we know, as the writer of Proverbs says, that pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Friend, don't fall. Don't trust in yourself. Trust in the Lord. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.